strength of his people and a stronghold of salvation to his anointed one. O Lord, save thine own people and give thy blessing unto thine inheritance. O feed them also and set them up forever. Unto thee will I cry, O Lord, my God, be not silent unto me. Blessed if thou makest all thou hearest not, I become like them that go down into the pit. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost. As it was in the beginning, Lord is the strength of his people, and the stronghold of salvation to his anointed one. O Lord, save thine own people, and give thy blessing unto thy inheritance. O feed them also, and set them up forever. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. He would our Lord Jesus Christ said, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Glory be to God on high, and on earth, peace, goodwill towards men. We praise thee, we bless thee, we worship thee, we glorify thee. We give thanks to thee for thy great glory. O Lord God, heavenly King, God the Father Almighty, O Lord, the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. Thou that sittest at the right hand of God the Father, have mercy upon us. For thou only art holy, thou only art the Lord, thou only, O Christ, with the Holy Ghost, art most high in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who has prepared for those who love thee such good things as past man's understanding, pour into our hearts those love toward thee, that we, loving thee above all things, may obtain thy promises, which exceed all that we can desire. Through Jesus Christ, thy Son, our Lord, who liveth and reigns with thee in the unity of the Holy Spirit ever, one God. World without end. Amen. Let's pray. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who has purchased thyself in universal church by the precious blood of thy dear Son, mercifully look upon the same, and at this time so guide and govern the minds of thy servants, the bishops, and pastors of thy flock, they may lay hands suddenly on no man, but faithfully and wisely may make choice of make choice of fit persons to serve in the sacred ministry of thy church. And to those who shall be ordained to any holy function, give thy grace and heavenly benediction. Both by thy life, their life and doctrine, they may show forth thy glory and set forth the salvation of all men. Almighty God, remember before thee this day thy faithful servant Dorothy, and pray thee, having opened her in the gates of larger life, I will receive her more and more into thy joyful service, that she may win with thee and thy servants everywhere the eternal victory. Through Jesus Christ, our Son, our Lord, Deliver the reign from thee in the unity of the Holy Spirit ever. Lord God, world without end. Amen. Here we begin the epistle in the sixth chapter of Blessed Apostle Paul's letter to the Romans, beginning with the third verse. Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ, were baptized into his death. Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, <clears throat> even so, we also should walk in newness of life. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection, of his resurrection Knowing this, 
that our, our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve <coughs> sin. For he that is dead is freed from sin. Now if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him, knowing that Christ being raised from the dead dieth no more. Death hath no more dominion over him. For in that he died, he died unto sin once, but in that he liveth, he liveth unto God. Likewise reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Here endeth the epistle. Thank you, God. Turn you again, O Lord, at the last, and be gracious unto thy servants. Lord, thou hast been our refuge from one generation to another. Hallelujah, hallelujah. In thee, O Lord, have I put my trust, that we never be put to confusion. Deliver me in thy righteousness. Bow down my ear to me, and haste to deliver me. Hallelujah. Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Continuation of the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory be to thee, O Lord. Lord. Jesus said unto his disciples, Except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, you shall in no case enter into the kingdom of heaven. Ye have heard that it was said that by them of old time, Thou shalt not kill, and whosoever shall kill shall be in danger of the judgment. But I say unto you, Whoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of the judgment, and whosoever shall say to his brother, Raka, shall be in danger of the council, and whoever shall say, Thou fool, shall be in danger of hell fire. Therefore, if thou bring thy gift to the altar, and then rememberest that thy brother hath aught against thee, leave there thy gift before the altar, and go thy way. First be reconciled to thy brother, and then come and offer thy gift. Agree with thine adversary quickly, whilst thou art in the way with him, lest at any time the adversary deliver thee to the judge, and the judge deliver thee to the officer, and thou be cast into prison. Verily I say unto thee, Thou shalt by no means come out thence, till thou hast paid the other most farthing. The Gospel of the Lord. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, and out of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being in one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the Scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of the Father. And he shall come again in glory to judge both the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeded from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshiped and glorified, who is taken by the prophets. And I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead, and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated. <clears throat>
Mass this Wednesday at noon will be St. Benedict Abbot. As always, a hearty welcome to our visitors. We're already not visitors anymore. Uh, you probably, at least most of you, if not all, know by now that our old friend uh, Norman DeRoos died yesterday afternoon about 4.30, peacefully, and she was certainly ready to go. You know that you haven't seen her over the last two weeks twice. Uh, funeral will not be here. It will be at the Prairie City Funeral Home uh, probably this coming Saturday. We have a meeting this Tuesday and get the details on that. But it will not. It will also not be a requiem mass. It will be the burial office from the prayer book, which is a, a beautiful service even by itself. But it just won't be what we usually have here. Uh, four weeks from the day. Bishop Fodor's official visitation. And maybe we should start thinking about it. getting ready for the potluck. Uh, we've got four weeks, but that's what we usually do, so I'll think of putting a sign up there next Sunday. We can start filling our sign up sheet up there next Sunday so we can start filling it up. And uh, <clears throat> now after copy out our name, we're beginning confirmation class, which will run for the next three weeks. And uh, after that, I'll be we're somewhere I have to go, so that's just the way it's going to happen. <clears throat> Leave thy gift before the altar and go thy way. First be reconciled to thy brother, and then come and offer thy gift. Come, Holy Ghost, and kindle the hearts of thy faithful people, the fire of thy love. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. We can see that this gospel is a real warning. First, we need to know that today's gospel reading is part of the Sermon on the Mount. It comes after the Beatitudes, blessed are the peacemakers, and so forth. Serious questions are raised by today's reading. What exactly does it mean to be reconciled? Does everyone have to have that warm and fuzzy feeling toward everyone else in the world before approaching the rail to receive Holy Communion? Well, if that were true, I dare say uh, no one would come up. I wouldn't be able to receive it either, so the Mass would be invalidated. But this homily today is not meant to discourage any of us here from receiving the Holy Communion. Because I don't believe any of you is, according to the prayer book, a notorious and open evil liver. The Eucharistic celebration is supposed to be a joyful one. None of us is perfect, and that certainly includes me. Now I confess, I feel wrath and fury, not warmth and fuzziness about fireworks going off across the street at 3 a.m. on July 5th. And I wasn't aware that the 4th of July now has an octave. Now if one is in a state of mortal sin and is aware of it, that is, example, murder, robbery, adultery, and receives communion, he or she is subject to the judge, God. So this passage is a challenge to what was, at that time, a certain moral minimalism in the Old Covenant. Now Jesus, in expounding the New Covenant, the New Law, is concerned with more than just how much, or how many, or how far. And when Jesus is questioned throughout the Gospels, a lot of times he provides a tough answer one that's tough to take. But I believe his point here is that he places the urgency of our, urgency of our worship of him after, after our love for each other. He does not want our worship without our love. Love one another as I have loved you, he said. So to those Christians in the world who practice vituperation, vitriol, venom, and vengeance, and then come right up and receive Holy Communion, 
he could be saying something like this. I, who am your God, I, on the night I gave you this commandment to love one another, gave you my body and blood, which you thoughtlessly receive in this way? As part of our Eucharistic liturgy, we say the general confession, a very well-written, serious acknowledgement of our sins. And we say we are heartily sorry. It's heartily sorry, not hardly sorry. The celebrant, be he bishop or priest, pronounces the absolution. Yet he, the celebrant, cannot be aware of every single thought, word, and deed of all his parishioners. Our Lord, of course, is aware because he knows everything. He knows if we have our minds right. The urgency is such that if we wait to agree with our adversary quickly, don't agree with our adversary quickly, and suddenly die, that is, the adversary delivers us to the judge, our judgment could be quite severe. Finally, the famous line, the ending, Thou shalt by no means come out thence, till thou hast paid the uttermost farther. That is the last penny. Our sister church of Rome uses this as a reference to purgatory. Purgatory is not really part of the Anglican lexicon. Rather, we prefer the intermediate state of paradise, a place where the soul is gradually purified before it is presented spotless before God in heaven. The soul, we believe, must be 100% purified, hence the last penny. The more purification accomplished on earth, the less required in the intermediate state. Not everything our Lord said is easy at all to take. It's pretty tough. It was meant to be. He doesn't coddle us. Sometimes it's tough love, but tough love is still love. And believe us now this, that God loves each of us infinitely and equally. He loves humanity more than any mother loves her children, more than any bridegroom loves his bride, and more than any son loves his father. His love, God's love, is everlasting. It is not diminished by human flaws, weaknesses, or sin. Thanks be to God. So now we God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost, he ascribes as most justly do, all might, majesty, power, glory, and dominion, henceforth and forevermore. Amen. <clears throat> the Lord be with you. Let us pray. O hold thou up my goings and thy paths, that my footsteps slip not. Incline thine ear to me, and hearken unto my words. Show thy marvelous love and kindness. Thou that art the Savior of them that put their trust in thee, O Lord.
things come of thee, O Lord, and of thine own have we given.